Podcast. This is Matt from the ranch. And continuing on looking at Psalm chapter 63, we've looked at how David sought God uh, because God is his God. And we've also looked at how he thirsted and longed for God and, and that he really believed in God is who satisfies and only God can satisfy. This passage goes on by saying, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. David says, God's loving kindness is better than life. Where I get myself in trouble is when I start thinking that life is better than God's loving kindness. In other words, I start putting value on things unlike how God puts value on things. I don't see things from his perspective and from his economy, what really matters, what really has value. And today, what I've chosen to do is, is we're just going to use my dog to, to illustrate this, Amos. Crisis-like decision-making oftentimes reveals, you know, where we really place our values, what's, what's important. And when we as followers of Jesus Christ want to value what God values. This is my dog Amos. And Amos is a six-year-old blue tick coonhound. And I've been blessed to have him since he was nine weeks old. He was an amazing gift to us. And he's been a great ministry partner for me as well. Uh, we use him like we use the longhorn steer or the horses or so many other things. as just a way of illustrating biblical truths. So with Amos, every day, sit just like that, he has a decision to make. And the decision is partly, you know, what is his agenda, what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. Um, as a blue tick hound, he lives his life through his nose. Now, I've been blessed to have labs up until now, and labs are great camp dogs. They are parties waiting to happen. They are typically very people-oriented people dogs. But when I got into Amos I, I, or into a hound, I really wasn't sure how he would do in, in this setting. Um, I've always wanted a hound. Uh, probably uh, because as a kid down in the mountains of Virginia, I would hear the hounds baying in the mountains at night, uh, maybe because I, I read where the red fern grows in fourth grade. I don't know, but I've always wanted a hound. So I was excited when, when Amos became a part of our, of our family. Like I said, he processes life through his nose. And with over 600 acres of, of just doggy heaven as far as things to eat and roll in uh, and smell, all day long he has to make a decision on whose priorities matter most, whether it's what he values or what I value. Now, he knows some basic obedience things. Like if I were to say, Amos, come heal, heal, heal. His job's really simple. Just move, move in relationship to me. Wherever I go, he goes, Amos, heal. When I stop, he should stop. And if he doesn't stop square, watch this, Amos, heal. Good boy. He should correct himself. We could tell him to stay, or tell him to go down. Good boy. Or to sit. Amos, sit. Good boy. One of the things that he kind of likes to do, and this is one thing hounds are good at, is this one. And this usually kind of wakes him up a little bit. Amos, you ready? Ready? Holler. <coughs> Amos, holler. <coughs> good boy. He's really good at that one. <laughs> Sometimes he shakes his ears. I don't think he actually knows just how loud he is. Um, Amos, come heal. Sometimes I'll ask things of him. Heal. Good boy. Stay. Down. Sometimes I'll ask things of him that he doesn't even understand, like Amos, commando. Commando. Good boy. Good boy. Come heal. Come heal. Good dog. You see, Amos doesn't obey... We got a niche. Amos doesn't obey because it makes sense to him. He obeys simply because I asked and he wants to please me. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 7, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. We think a lot, and maybe you're familiar with those first two verses in 5 and 6, but 7 is really important too. Why? Because when we don't embrace that three-letter word, that little three-letter word that's a really big word, all, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him, He should direct your paths. We're really embracing verse 7, because verse 7 tells us we're not to um, be wise in our own eyes. See, when I say, I think I know better, I'm saying, God, I don't think you know best. 
So I'm going to choose what's best. I'm going to seek what I think has the greatest value. When I ask Amos to crawl on his belly like that, he obviously, he doesn't understand it, but he doesn't have to. All he has to know is that I asked. And because of the relationship that we have, he's willing to do even that. Now, sometimes this relationship gets tested, right? And he has to discern what's the best choice to make. I asked Kristen if she would come and give me a hand with this. So Kristen Thompson works in our barn. She's one of our amazing barn staff. And uh, she stepped out of doing chores just to come and do this. So we really appreciate that. So Kristen, I'm going to have you just stand right there if you would. Amos, stay. And I'm going to ask Kristen to call Amos, and we're going to see if, uh, if he'll go to her or come to me. Now, probably first come up and just say hi to him, all right, and love on him. Stay. Good boy. Good boy. All right, stay. Okay. Now, what does Kristen have to offer? Oh, see him looking? Oh, Kristen offers great things. Love, appreciation. She thinks he's the bomb. So for him, that's a really big deal. So I'm just going to tell him to stay, and then Kristen's going to call him, and we're going to see how he does. Go ahead. Stay. Amos, come here. Stay. Amos, Amos, come here. Stay. Amos. Amos. Stay. Amos, come here. Stay. Come here. Stay. Come here. Stay. Come here. Stay. 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 Come here, come here. Stay. Stay. Come here, Amos. Stay. Come here. Amos, come. Good boy. All right. We're not gonna we're not gonna make it go any longer. Thank you, Kristen, very much. Because he did a good job. Amos, come. Come, come, come. Too many smells in this little arena here. Amos. Good boy. Come heel. Come heel. Heel. There you go. Good boy. Stay. He had a decision to make there. What did Kristen offer? Well, nothing bad, right? He was all good. But what did he do? And, and why did I wait until I did to tell him that it was okay and release him and then call him to me? Because his eyes went to Kristen and, and his attention was there. And I needed him to look to me. Look to me to say, is that important to you, Matt? Because even though what's offered is good, if it's not important to you, I, I don't, I don't want to pursue it. So David says this, God's loving kindness is better than life. And my encouragement, my challenge to you, and my challenge to myself in this too is, am I valuing things the way God values them? Do I really, with confidence, am I able to say the same thing David said? You know what, God? You, mm, you're better than life. Mm.